Hi, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be showing you me making up some Christmas moulds. Uh, as you can see, here's the pens and all the details of where they're from are in the tab. So with these moulds, just give them a little bit of a paint with some wax paints, colour them in. This one didn't quite come out as good as I hoped it would, as you'll see in the end, but um, it's my first time using this mould, so hopefully next time it will be okay. So make sure you give it a good colouring, getting all the details. Also, I find that um, if this wasn't a candle, if this was uh, a wax melt with things like this, Mika powder is good to just rub it in on the area. Right, so the, this one, this is a uh, Christmas tree, so I'm just putting some glitter on it to make it look pretty. All the details of where they're from, as I said, is in the tabs. I'm putting some gold stars in this one just to make it a little bit different. With the pumpkin, I coloured in the top bit green, so it looked like a green stalk when it comes out, hopefully. This little resin care bear, I just fully coloured in purple, but I won't be doing that next time because it didn't turn out quite as I wanted either. Most of my wax is from Candle Shack. They come really quickly, like within two days. I find their wax is really easy to use. And if you've got any questions, they're really, really helpful. Uh, with these moulds, obviously I'm putting a little bit of a hole at the top, putting through um, the wick. The wick is from Wicks and Wax, and you can cut it down to the size that you want. So it's not a wick. It's already made up, you've got to do it yourself. Um, the ones in the smaller ones, like the pumpkins, I've used just ordinary wicks that come ready done. They're also from Candle Shack. So as you can see, I'm just putting a bit more glitter in one of the moulds and just uh, finishing off putting the holes in for the wicks. They can be a little bit temperamental sometimes, so can be a bit of a pain. So I'm cutting that one down to try and make sure there's no wick on the end when it comes out. This mould was a bit of a pain. I had to stick it together properly because otherwise the wax would leak out of it. As you can see, I'm putting numerous elastic bands on. This still didn't look totally secure. And then I made a mistake because I should have put the wick in before I'd put the mould together. So I undo it all and put it back in. Don't know why I didn't think of that in the first place, but oh well. Sometimes it's a big learning curve with candles. You learn something new each time you do it. With these ones as well, I just put them underneath a cup or a glass or a mug, whatever really. Um, just so they're standing up straight. Because obviously, don't want a wobbly, a wobbly candle. With this, I'm using pillar wax. Um, that's not in my wax melt machine, so I'm making that up with under a fry, under hot water, sorry. Measuring out the water, uh, the the fragrance oil. Give it a stir for one to two minutes. I usually give it for two minutes, and then uh, put in the wax block. This is also from Wix and Wax. Uh, with these, really, the temperature needs to be quite high in order to melt the block down. So it took me quite a while to melt this one down and it didn't get as strong a green as I wanted to either 
I thought it looked alright when it was in the container, but when it came out later on, it was a bit too pale, but... Never mind. I'll know next time. So fill it right up to the top. With this wax, the only problem is it is a double pour. So although it looks like it's going to be okay, you always have to do another pour. Um, I personally don't mind doing that, but I know that uh, some people don't particularly like doing a double pour. So later on, when I notice that uh, the wax had gone down, I got my little machine, my heat gun, and I waxed the wax that I saved from earlier for some of them. Waxed it down and poured it in with the rest. I just had to make up some more, more wax, as you can see. As you can see, it does take a long time to get that wax to to mold down. I always over pour, always, because it's easier to get out. Well, I find it's easier to get out. With the spare of this, I put some citronella oil into it. This is proper essential oil, not fragrance oil. Mixed it in for two minutes. And then poured it into the bee mould because it was yellow, went with the mould. And then this is how they turned out. These are the pumpkin ones. Usually I'd put colour on it, but I had leftover wax, so I just pulled it into the mould. This was the small pumpkin. I was quite pleased with how my pumpkins turned out. Uh, as you can see, where it's over poured, you just take the little bits off. So it's nice and easy. And then, oh, I dropped it. Later on, I'll uh, take the end off so it stands up properly. And here's the final one, the big one. Oh, I love these moulds. And they actually do smell like pumpkin, which makes it even better. As you can see, the green, you can see a little bit of the green on the top. I was quite impressed with how that turned out. This one, mm, not so sure. I don't know what you guys think. It was all right. I might uh, re-wax it down and try again. Or I might just not add colour. I might just put the colour in with the wax so it's all one colour. The Christmas tree, I was pleased with the Christmas tree, just not with the colour. I just felt it was a little bit too light. However, the glitter, I thought, looked pretty good. It's a hard one to get out, this one. Really annoying. Oh, and it came out. There we go. So it came out nicely. Overall, pretty pleased with all that. Anyway... This was my final one. This was my bee one, which I loved. I love my little bee one, and it smells lush. The smell of citronella is, I think, is gorgeous. There you go, that's a nice one, that is, with nice little bees on the side. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. See you again. Bye.